believe that they're, uh, they're, oh, yes. they're praying under the Son of God? Oh, yes. By faith? Yeah. By uh, faith? And then if I die, I find out that they weren't on it. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? I want to know. I want to know. Wouldn't you ask them? That would be a good way of finding out. What Jesus are you praying in the name of? That would be a great thing to do. See, to ask a question. Then we start this whole teaching looking at Isaiah 29, 13. Let's go there one more time. The Lord just keeps leading us back. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing. We're in Isaiah anyway. Isaiah chapter 29, verse 13. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth, and with their lips do honor me. I heard you guys out here praising the Lord this morning. <laughs> Didn't I? Yeah. There was some good praise going on out here this morning. But I know this didn't apply to anyone in here. It says, Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their hearts far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. That's where the challenge comes in. Remember, we came into the church, and a man told us, or a woman told us, pray in the name of Jesus. So we started praying in the name of Jesus. My two-year-old granddaughter prays in the name of Jesus. Because a man commanded her to. Now listen to it in the Amplified Bible. And think about all the things that we've been saying. We're going to pray. It says, And the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but remove their hearts and minds far from me, and their fear and reverence for me are a commandment of men that is learned by repetition without any thought as to the meaning.
Before we go on, I want us to read one scripture, make sure we get there. It's in Psalms 85, I believe it is. Psalms 83. <clears throat> Psalms 83. Start reading in verse number 16. Psalms 83, verse 16. Verse 16 says, Fill their face with shame that they may seek thy name. It's interesting the way the Lord brings scriptures up to you that relate to scriptures. Anyone remember or have it come to mind that, that says, Study to show yourself approved? A workman on the God, rightly verified in the word of truth, that needed not to be what? Shame. He said, study to get to that position. Here he's saying something that uh, fill their face with shame that they may seek thy name, O Lord. Let them be confounded and troubled forever. Yea, let them be put to shame and perish, that men may know that, that thou, whose name alone is Jehovah, art the most high God of all the earth. Until you study, you don't understand what that's saying. It's saying his name alone. His name without him is Jehovah. His name without him is God. His name all by itself is Jehovah, is God, is Lord. So he's, he's, he's telling you that his name alone has all the power of the universe invested in it. All the power that there is in existence exists in his name. And he gave you carte blanche to use it. So we make it slime. Do you understand what I'm saying when I say his name alone is Jehovah, is God? Do you understand what his name said? See, if you have God over here and his name over here, this is God, Jehovah. His name over here, that's God, Jehovah. Don't need him, his name alone. Is God. That's how awesome His name is. And we take it for granted. And we wonder why miracles don't happen. Didn't He say in an earlier scripture that His name is the Lord? Didn't we read that? Turn to Jeremiah 16.21 and then we'll pray. We'll see how much time we have left. Jeremiah chapter 16, verse 21. It says, Therefore, behold, I will this once cause them to know. I will cause them to know my hand and my might, and they shall know that my name is the Lord. What is the Lord? He didn't say that I am the Lord, did he? His name is the Lord. Is his name your Lord? See, that's a different application, isn't it? See, when we go to the scriptures of Philippians, it was it where it says that he's been given a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess what? That it's Lord. His name alone is Lord. He's been given a name that is above every name, above every circumstance. Let's go before the Father and pray. We're going to pray the prayer that we have been praying in accordance with Ephesians chapter 1, verses 17 through 23. I want you to follow after me. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. 
that you give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation knowledge of you, Father, that the eyes of our understanding are being enlightened, that we may know what is the hope of your calling and what the riches of the glory of your inheritance is in us. And what is the exceeding greatness of your power to us who believe according to the working of your mighty power which you worked in Christ when you raised him from the dead and set him at your own right hand in heavenly places Far above all principalities, Far above all principalities and, power, and power and might and, might, and, dominion, and dominion and every name that is named, name that is named. Not, only world, not only in this world but also in that which is to come and has put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. We thank you, Father, that we receive this prayer answered right now in the name of our Lord and Savior, the King of kings and Lord of lords, Jesus, the anointed one of Nazareth, amen. Now, was anyone confused in what name we were just praying? Hmm? If you were, let me know. This is teaching. Let me read it to you again and see if this identifies whose name we were praying says, we thank you, Father, that we receive this prayer answered right now in the name of our Lord and Savior, the King of kings and Lord of lords, Jesus, the anointed one of Nazareth, amen. Was everyone pretty clear as to what Jesus we were talking about? The Jesus of Nazareth, the one that was anointed, the one that's Lord of Lords and King of Kings, the one that's our Lord and our Savior, that's the Jesus we're talking about. Not Jesus Barabbas. Not Jesus that Paul preached. This is the Jesus whose name we're praying in. Now here's a revelation for you. If we would have just ended this prayer like this. We thank you, Father, that we receive this prayer answered right now. Amen. What would have been wrong with that? Hmm? I didn't name it in the name of Jesus or what his name represents. Would anyone feel comfortable if they just prayed like that? Okay, now, see, it's starting to come through. See, it's, I'm not trying to set a bunch of rules for you. I'm trying to get you to think so that when you pray for someone in the name that is above every name, things will happen. We're going to see the miraculous happen because there's no power that has gone out of the name of Jesus. 